All right, so today we're going to start with uh, exercise 209, and um, this is, you know, there's a few, there's a few lectures along the way that are, are particularly fun to do because generally everybody's excited about them. This is one of them. So we've done all these rectangular objects, we've made windows and that sort of thing, and everybody says, but I want to make the organic shapes, I want to, I mean, that's the nature of a computer. So today we get to learn how to do that. And uh, we'll do a variety of strategies, and I'll show you kind of how to go about doing it and making it look uh, good. A large part of this, though, is intuitively understanding how things work. So like, we'll build a seat cushion today, and one of the things that I'll talk about is the butt depression in the seat cushion and thinking about how a cushion naturally deforms. And so the better you will be better at modeling if you're more observant about how things are in real life. So there's no gravity, there's no laws that exist within Rhino that tell us, oh, well, we're pulling down here, therefore it's going to bulge over here. It's more just intuitive work. And so you guys have to kind of get used to looking at those kinds of things. And I'll show you uh, how I would go about doing it. Um, so we'll do that today. Uh, down the road, there's another lecture when we do lighting for the first time that everybody's eyes open. And so it's another really fun one. So we'll get to that. Um, but for today, we're going to do the organic shapes and objects. And uh, I'm going to show you how to go about making them. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Rhino in a brand new file. It'll be a large object inches file, as is the case for most, uh, most of the ones that I create. if Rhino decides to load. All right, so there's Rhino. So when I start thinking about modeling this, I'm going to start with a basic like two foot by two foot sofa cushion, for lack of a better term. That's what I'm going to start with uh, in terms of building it. And so um, on the easiest level, certainly we could take a box and we can start at point zero, 0, and say at 2 feet, comma 2 feet, and make the height 6 inches, for example, which gives us this little piece. And I could say, OK, well, you know what? I kind of want to round the edges. So I could say, let's fill it with a radius of, I don't know, um, 0.5 inches. And I could come in here, and I could say, this surface, oops. Sorry, fillet surface, radius, eh, whatever, one. And I could say, OK, let me do whatever. Anyway, I could do it that way. It's not going to give me the most organic shape. It's still going to be very rigid and contained within boundaries. So instead, I have to start thinking about how do, I, how do I create this using some curves such that I can kind of get the outlines. And then we'll figure out how to put some surfaces in. So the first thing that I'm going to do instead is just create a rectangle, corner to corner. And I'll say 0, comma 0, and my other corner will be 2 feet, comma 2 feet, like that. And if I look at this rectangle, and I could, I could switch into the top view to see it here. There it is. I'd like to kind of manipulate this a little bit more. So first off, let me just go ahead and explode it. So I'll type explode, which gives me individual line segments on either side. And if I were drawing this out by hand and I was thinking about a cushion, well, there's a little bit of a rounded corner to it. The sides might you know, bulge out a little bit or something like that. So I want to do something like that to this line. So if I look at this line for a second, I can come over here and turn on my edit points. Let me just do, let, let me do the control point. Well, no, let's do the edit points. And you see that when I turn on the edit points, I get a point that's on each end. So there's one point, and there's another point. I really need a few more points than that to, to start to create any shape. So I'm going to hit Escape twice to get rid of those points. And I'm going to take this first curve, and I'm going to type Rebuild. It should be available, I think it's under the Edit menu. I'll have to look. And when I type Rebuild, notice that I have something called Point Count, and I can specify. In parentheses, that is currently what the line is. So it currently has two points on it. So if, for example, I went to point count and I said 3, and the degree, um, we can leave it at 3. That's fine. It's, it, because it's a straight line, it's 1. Um, 
if we're going, if we're doing any curvature in three dimensions, we want it to be three. If we're just doing curves in two dimensions, so flat on a plane, it would be two. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It could still be a straight line in, in 3D space. So we'll just go ahead and leave it at three. You can check this box for preview, and it'll highlight changes in your line. The changes are negligible for my line at this point. So I'll go ahead and say OK. Now when I select that line, and I come over here and turn my edit points on, notice that I have more points in control. It's a little weird because you say three points and it gave me four points. Um, it's dividing the line into three segments is essentially what it's doing. So I want a few more than that. So let me, let me undo that. I'm going to go back to rebuild again. And this time, instead of three, let's do seven. And I'll say OK. Let me turn my edit points on. Perfect. Now I'm getting more control over this line. So let me go ahead and rebuild the rest of these curves too. I can select them all at once and I can rebuild them. I don't know where rebuild is. Yeah, it's under the edit menu, rebuild. I always type it. So seven again, I'll go ahead and say OK. And then let's take these curves and turn those edit points on as well. So now I have a bunch of points that represent these lines, and I can start to manipulate those points. So if I look at one corner here, for example, and I select it. Notice I'm selecting from left to right to select both points. There's two points on top of each other right here. I can then click and drag these two points and pull them in. Now, it's only dragging along the axes because right now I have ortho turned on. So let me turn ortho off. And I'll click and drag these two points in like that to about where they would meet as part of the cushion. So you see how I'm swooping through? Notice, though, when I edit that, I get some, some further editing of my points so that the curve is through. Let me go ahead and move these points back a little bit. And part of the thing about doing an organic shape is we're no longer working in terms of actual measurements because organic shapes don't have specific, oh, that's a half an inch in or something. It's too symmetrical. So we're going to just work with a little bit of nudging here. So let me pull that one in about like that. Pull this one in, maybe like that. Now the good news is we can also edit these as we go forward. So let me do a little bit more. I'm going to push this whole back side out just a little bit. I'm moving all three at once and pushing that out. And then I'm going to take this center one and I'm going to push that one out a little bit further, like that. I'm going to pull this one in just a little bit there. And I'll pull this one in just a little bit there. And again, I'm not working on trying to create some symmetry. I'm just kind of adjusting a little bit. I'm going to pull this out a whisker more. I'll pull this one out a whisker more as well. Something like that. So now as I look at this, it's definitely not that rectangular shape anymore. It helped to start with the rectangle because I set up my lines, but now I'm uh, evolving it into that shape just a little bit more. So let me go ahead and hit Escape twice so that my points go away. And now I'm looking at my object. And let me go ahead and switch it back into the 3D view. So these are still perfectly flat on the ground, so as if it were on like a metal sheet. But in reality, there's a little bit of curvature to a cushion. And it's not sitting perfectly flat, usually. So let me go back and take all of these. I'll turn my edit points back on. And I'll make a few adjustments. So maybe I'll take a few of these curves. And I'm going to do these at once to save myself a little bit of work. And I'm going to move. This time, instead of nudging, I'm typing move. V for vertical. And we'll pop those up just a little bit. So if I were looking at this. In one of the side views, you can see that my curve now has some up and down undulations, too. So I've taken that basic box shape, and I've deconstructed it into a little bit more of an organic shape. Let me hit Escape twice to get rid of my control points. Then let me go ahead and take this object right here, and I'm going to create a second copy of this object. So I'm going to copy V for vertical, because I want it to go up, and I'll go up 6 inches. So now I have two versions of this. And I went ahead and I created the first version first, and I just copied the first version. 
so that they would be identical at this point. Now I can go through and I can make some further adjustments to these. So maybe I'll take this one, let's take the whole top here, let me turn my edit points back on. And let's pull these in just a little bit more. I'll take these three and I'll pull them in just a little bit. Too much. Maybe like that. Right. And you kind of have to look at it in multiple views. I should also adjust the ups and downs just a little bit. So let me lower a few of these. Move, V for vertical, just a little bit. So I'm manipulating the upper curve as well as the lower curve. So now I need to start thinking about what the sides of the curve would represent. Oh, actually, let me show you how to make it a surface first, and then I'll go back and, and show you further manipulations. OK, so I have this. And you know what? I don't like this corner. Let me fix that corner really quick. It comes to a little bit too sharp of a point. So let me go back to the edit points, and then let me pull these back just a little bit more. Sorry, it was bugging me that that was a little too sharp of a corner. OK, so essentially what I'm going to be creating here is I want there to be a surface that goes between these boundary curves. And to create this, we're going to use a command called a network surface, or a curve network. And what that does is it says, give me curves that run in one direction, and give me curves that run in another direction, and make a surface from those curves. And so if I look at this right now, I have a curve that's roughly going in the x direction here, and another one in the x direction here. I also have a curve that goes in the y direction here and a curve that goes in the y direction here. It doesn't matter that they're x and y. You know, they could be slanted or tipped or, or however. It's just generally speaking in one direction and generally speaking in the other direction. When I have those, I can then select all four. And I can go up to Surface, Curve Network. This is one of the weird things in Rhino, though, if you actually want to type the command, it's network surface instead of curve network. So if you start typing curve network, it won't be there. I don't know why they didn't make it the same. So we'll select curve network. And if I have curves going in both directions the way that it should, in this case I do, I should get a preview that says A, B, C, and D. That gives me my four sides of my curve. The default options for here are all fine. And I'll go ahead and I'll say OK. And Rhino will then build a surface that connects those curves, which is pretty cool. And it interprets you know, how we would connect from, say, here over to there based on these, these edge curve conditions. So this is good, but it's not quite there yet. So let's take it a little bit further. I'm going to draw another curve, again, just a basic polyline here. And I'm going to go from the middle of this side to the middle of that side, like that. So there, there that curve is. I'm going to take this curve, and I'm going to rebuild it. And I might only rebuild this one five times instead of seven. So I'll go to five. I'll say OK. Let me turn my edit points on. So now I have another set of controls here. So in this instance, I'm going to take these two points here, and I'm going to move them down. So I'll type move followed by V for vertical, and we'll go down a fair amount. Because I'm envisioning somebody sitting and deforming this cushion and having it stay there. I'll also make this point go up just a little bit. So let me move V for vertical. And I don't want it to go up too much, but about like that. Now, I still have, let me hit Escape twice to get rid of the control points, I still have one two, and three curves going roughly in the y direction. And I have two curves going roughly in the x direction. So if I take those five curves, and I go up to curve, or excuse me, surface, network, curve, net, uh, blah, 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 curve, network, again, I get A, B, C, and D, which is what I want. And I say, OK. Now, the top of that is now depressing based on that 
curve that I put in there. Furthermore, it's raising up here. So it's a combination of those curves that's starting to get the shape that I want. Okay, so let's take this a little bit further. This time, let me create a, I'll do a line that goes from somewhere on this side to somewhere on that side. And I want it to go roughly across the leg lines here. I have to make sure that this does actually snap to the line. And you notice as I move over here, I have not selected under my object snap. This will snap to those points, even though they're invisible. I also might need to add some extra points. So I don't have one right in here, and I really would like one right about there. So I can use a command called insert knot. Insert knot. Select curve. And see, see how the points show up on that curve? I can add one more point right there. Let me repeat the process for the line over here. So insert knot, select curve, and I'll put one right about there. Now I also need one on this middle curve. So insert knot, need one more right about there. Now when I go ahead and do my curve, because this is no longer a straight line, I'm going to use a different curve option. So I'll go into the curve here, and I want the second one over. It's called interpolate points. That's the one I want. And what that does is it allows me to specify specific points along the curve. So we'll do that, and it'll go from that point to, come on, where's my knot? Let me turn off perpendicular for a second here. Oh, come on. Maybe I didn't complete the knot. Yeah, hold on a second. Let me do it one more time. Insert knot. Yeah, I didn't actually, there. I didn't finish the command. It's my fault. So we'll come over here, interpolate points, and I'm going to go from knot to knot to knot. There. I'll hit Enter. It's really important when we start to get intersecting curves like this that they meet at a specific point. So that's why I created the knot. I know those two points match. Now I'd like to depress for the leg in here a little bit. So I'll take this curve, and if I were to just show my points, you see that I have an end point. That's the same. That's the same. That's the same. But I really kind of need another point in here. So I'll go back to that insert knot. And what insert knot essentially does is it gives us a little bit finer control. Let me take one more there, take one there, and one there. I'll take this, and I'll show all of my points. Oh, come on. All right, well, it's not giving me those points. How nice. Let me go ahead and just move these two. Let me move vertical, and I can drop those points down a little bit to create the depressions of where the, the, you know, your thighs would be. So I'm really trying to think about what does this cushion look like. And maybe I'm exaggerating it too much. Once I have that set up, I can go ahead and do that network surface with all of these again. So we'll go up to my uh, surface. We'll go to Curve Network, say OK. And I've now worked through creating that. Maybe that's a little <laughs> exaggerated. Right, so maybe I need to make some adjustments. But you get the idea. Right? The, yeah. <laughs> Your knees are a little high. Anyway, now I want to create the rest of these surfaces. So at the bottom, I'm not overly worried about the bottom. I'm not going to see much of the bottom. I'll just use the four existing pieces that are there. And we'll go up to Surface Curve Network, and we'll say OK. And that then builds that. It's relatively flat. It's sitting on something. I'm OK with it. Now I want to think about how do I create the surface that goes in here. So let me start with a polyline. And I'll go right from that end to right to that end. And I'll hit Enter. And I'll go right from this end to right to that end. Enter. And now, on this end, I would have 1, 2, 3, and 4. Notice they're in opposite directions. And I could then go to Surface 
curved network, and I can build out the back side. It's not quite as good as I'd like. I'd like a little bit finer control over that. So let me make some further adjustments. Let me take this one and this one. Let me rebuild. Just three is enough. Turn on my control points here. I'm going to select this and this. Then I'm going to move them in the top view, because it's much easier to see this in the top view. So let me move them out just a little bit so that I've got a bit of a bulge going out. Let me take this one and this one. And in the top view, I'll do the same thing. Move. And we'll get those to bulge out just a bit there. And I'd like one more control curve that goes from the middle to the middle there. I'll rebuild that one as well. I'll show my points. And then let's take these two and move them much further out. So it looks like when I created that, see how it's not quite in line? It doesn't go straight down. It won't matter when I create the, the end surface. So I'll take this and this and that. I'll take this and this. And I'll go back to my surface curve network. And I'll build that in. So I'm thinking carefully about if I'm pushing down here, obviously it has to bulge out in the back. Likewise, it's going to have to bulge out right here, and it's going to have to bulge out right there. So I'm thinking about what makes this look realistic as I'm creating it. So let's come back over to the front. A couple more. We'll go from there to there. Go from there to there. I want one in the middle here. And you know what? I think I want this a little bit further in the back. All right, let's take all of those curves. And I'll rebuild. Same thing. Turn my edit points on. And now I need to walk my way around these. So these two first. Remember, I'm doing these somewhat in the top view because it makes it a little bit easier to control. So then I will select my next two. Uh-oh. Sorry. I had too many things selected. Let me move those over. There we go. Take these two. Oops. Here I am in Photoshop. I'm pressing spacebar. That's what I was doing this morning. Happens to me, too. Pull that one out a little bit more, like that. So now I've created those. Um, trying to think what else. Let me do one more in the front here, just for illustration purposes. I'll do one that goes from midpoint to midpoint horizontally instead of vertically. I'll rebuild this one. Go by uh, eight. Turn those on. And this will allow me to pull out Notice how much I'm working in both views at once. Right? It's really helpful to do it in both views at once. So about like that. To try to uh, let me take this there and this. Move that over just a little bit more. And I'll move that one over just a little bit more. Again, they don't have to be symmetrical because it's a cushion. So now that I have that, I need to make the rest of these sides. So we'll take this side. It'll be one, two, and three. And it'll be the top. And it'll be the bottom. And we'll go up to surface curve network. Okay. 
and it will build that side of it for me. Same thing across the front here, one, two, three, and then the two sides, two, surface, curve network, there we go. and our last one will be there. And we'll go up to surface, curve network, and I'll say OK. So now if we're looking at this, that's far from being just a box. right? It feels a lot more like a cushion. So let's start to look at it as instead of as a solid object, let's start to see it with some materials on it and see how that would apply. So I'm going to go into my V-Ray materials library. And I'm going to go ahead and load up some kind of a cloth material. Um, go into resources, V-Ray here. And I think it's called fabric. There we go. Um, and I'm going to pick something that's um, on the uglier side. There's some kind of benign ones, but I'm going to pick something that's, that's very obvious so that you can see the pattern. So let me do the black and white swirl. There you go. And I'm going to apply that to the, um, the object here. But before I do that, let's clean up the layers. So we'll say that this is a cushion. How do you spell cushion? Does it have an I in it? Yeah. I don't know. Sounds good to me. Whatever. That's how I'm spelling it. Let me take those, and I'm going to put them on the cushion layer. Change object layer. I'll get rid of the remainder of these. We'll delete them. So I only have cushion. There's only really one thing here, so it can all be on one layer. And then I will apply this fabric, apply material to layer, and it'll be on the cushion layer, and I'll say OK. Now, if I were to switch to the rendered view, lo and behold, there's our really busy texture. Now, this might be a good idea to go through and, and do some texture mapping. So I could take the whole thing. It's roughly a box, and we could try applying a box map to it. Let me go to Properties. I'll go to Mapping. I'll go to Box. We'll do a bounding box, World, and Cap it. I'm going to do x equals y equals z to even it out. And it's reasonable. The other thing that we could do is we could apply, each of these would be a separate piece of fabric, potentially. If it was, we could apply a, a surface mapping to it instead. Let me delete the mapping there. I could take this object and apply a surface mapping. And it should apply directly on the object. And then I could make adjustments from it there. The problem is getting the scale to match up exactly as you want it. So to me, the box mapping is usually the easiest. Remember, we can manipulate. If we didn't like the way it was, it was falling in a particular way, we could adjust that um, as we go through. Now, I think it would also be a little bit better if I added some, some detail around it. So maybe a little piping around the edge or something. So let me do, at this corner, let me create a little circle. So I'll put a little circle. My diameter, um, let's do it at maybe a quarter of an inch. And then let me take that object, and it's flat right now. Let me rotate 3D. And I want the rotation, you can see this here. I want the, this rotation angle to be kind of straight out in line with the, the curves that I'm creating. So somewhere out in there. The problem is getting it in position. So, and I don't want to snap it to be down at some odd angle. So we'll just call it there is close enough. Nope, it snapped down for me. So let me undo that. We'll go out. I'll do it. Do I project on? There we go. No, it's projecting. Why are you projecting? All right, well, I'm going to have to snap to the circle itself. So I'm going to turn on. I, I hesitate to turn on near snap, but this is one instance where it works because I want control over where it is on the circle. So I'll go to near. Let me hold down Shift to be straight here out in that direction. 
and I'll fold this up like that. So essentially, I'm creating a circle like that, and then I'll do a sweep. So it's a sweep one. My edges. Now, here's a, here's a good point. So I have the option to chain edges, or I can do one edge at a time. I'm going to try chaining the edges. So I'll sweep one. I want to chain the edges. It's going to be this, 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 and that. Enter, cross section curve. There it is. Enter, seam, enter. We'll go ahead and say OK. And it should have built the little piping all the way around for me, which it did. Now, in reality, I probably need to apply like a black material to this. That would be better than, than having the stripes in it. But I also have a little bit of an issue where the two pieces came together. So I need to do some cleaning up. And so maybe the easiest way of doing that would be a vertical plane that runs right through my object like that. And then I can trim one side, and I can trim the other side. and get it so that it comes together. It may have little gaps. If I'm not planning on 3D printing, I'm not going to worry about it. Because when, you, when I render this from here, you'll never see it. Okay. So essentially what I was able to do is I was able to create a cushion. I have a little piping on it to, to hide that seam. Okay, It looks pretty good. I'm happy uh, with the end results. In all reality, I think I would probably pick a different material, because that's a, a particularly busy material. Um, if I picked one of the... Like, let me, let me do brown leather, for example. Apply material to layer, cushion layer, and there it is. It's going to look a little, a little cleaner. Um, I probably need a little, the same little uh, piping that goes around the bottom of it. But you guys get the idea. So this is one strategy for how do you create this organic object. And I'm going to show you another example. Um, using a similar technique. So let me move on. And I'm going to start working over here. I'm going to switch out of the rendered view back to the shaded mode. And this time, I'm going to start with um, the same rectangle. We'll do at 16, 16 inches. I'm going to explode again. So this is the same general idea. I'm going to rebuild. We'll rebuild with, uh, let's do five this time. Let me turn my points on. There we go. And we'll bump these sides out just a little bit. Move this out. Actually, you know what? Let me do it this way. Let me move these corners in. Easier to do it in the top view, so I'll switch back to the top view. In reality, I might spend a little bit more time finessing the shape, but you guys don't need to watch me go through that. But this time, instead of doing the same kind of copying, I'm going to do this more as a fluff pillow. And I'll do that by drawing a line from one end to the other end, like this. And then the, this one needs to go from end to middle to end. And so now I can take these two lines, and I'll rebuild them again. And I'll just do five. I'll turn my points on. And I should have a nice point there in the center. And I should have these other points like that. Uh, let me, re You know what? Let me rebuild these as seven. Give me a little bit finer control. Let me turn those points back on. There we go. Looks like those two points didn't quite line up. That's going to be problematic. Let me take one of these points and move it on top of the other point so that they're at the same location. Let me switch back into my perspective view. And I'm going to work to move these all vertically. So let's take this group first. Move V for vertical. And I'll pull that up just a little bit. Take the next group up. Move V for vertical. Uh, 
Let's move this one V. And pull it down just a little bit. And so this time, I'm creating a pillow that's a different shape. You guys see how that's different? Let's move these guys up just a little bit higher. Oops. V for vertical. Oh, come on. Yeah, about like that. OK, so in this instance, as I start to create this, I have a little bit of a problem. So I have a curve, let's call this in one direction, and I have a curve in the other direction. But then I have these four curves that go around the outside. So if I were to do a curved network of this, it would, it would say, unable to sort curves, select the curves one at a time. Well, curve in first direction, I don't know, maybe that one. Well, wait. That one is kind of in the same direction. It doesn't work, so we've got a problem. So I need to conceive of this as curves going in one direction and then the other direction. So if I took this curve and this curve and joined them together, so I'll type join, that curve kind of goes in this direction, this curve kind of goes in that direction, and this plus this joined kind of goes in that direction. I know they come back and meet at a point, but they still kind of go in the same direction. So in this instance, with that joined, that joined, and this, those three are going in one direction. This one's going in the opposite direction. It's going to work. I'll go to Surface, Curve Network. In this instance, I didn't get all the corners because it's a little bit more complicated because the curves go back to themselves. But I can go ahead and say OK, and it's going to build out that shape of a cushion instead. So before I actually build the shape, I can fine tune it a little bit. Let me take these two objects. Let me mirror them. I want them mirrored on the underside like that. I should probably turn the points on and make a few more adjustments and tweak it. For example, maybe one of the sides, you want to have that side squished a little bit. So I can take this and I can move it. You know how sometimes the pillows have dents in them or, or whatever. I could also choose to make the corners a little bit more sharp. So let me turn all the edit points on. And I could take those corners and I could pull them out to be a little bit more sharp. It might be easier to do it in the top view here. The key here is that I'm, I'm selecting all of them at once. Maybe like that. I've got the little dent in it. I can go back. In this case, I have to do them as two separate operations. So it would be one, two, three, four, network surface. And then I'd be building the underside of it. One, two, three, and four. And I'd be building the underside of that uh, particular pillow. So once again, I could uh, it's on the cushion layer. So if I switch over into the uh, rendered mode, we'd see it. Maybe I want there to be a little like a button on the pillow or something. I could model the button. Uh, let's do it with an ellipsoid. And you know what? Let me look under here and see if I can find. No, we're going to have to do it this way. I could also, it might be easier actually to just do a sphere first. So center of sphere is right. Oh, let me turn off near. I told you near is dangerous. There. And my diameter, this would be the diameter of, of say, the button. Um, I don't know, 1 inch there. Let me do a scale 1D from that center point. 
to here. And we can collapse that down into a little button. Okay, you guys see how I'm, I'm putting these kinds of things together. Okay, so I've done that one. Okay, I've got those two options. Now what if I wanted to do something more like a curtain or something along that line? So in that context, I'll again start with my basic line and I'll draw it over here. Um, let me turn on ortho for a second so that it's straight. And I need to know kind of the general size of this curtain. So let's say this, uh, this half of the curtain is four feet. So I'll type four feet, there it is. And I'll take this line and I want to think about the number of folds that I would want in this curtain long term. And I will type rebuild and I'll rebuild by that, that number, so the number of segments. So I don't know, maybe 20. Then I will turn on my points. We get all of my little points. Notice that they're nice and evenly spaced except when I get to the end. That's a little problematic, but we'll, we'll deal with that in a second. Now what I want to do is I want to select right, the opposite points. So I've selected those. I'm going to type move, and I'm going to move these points in this direction, which is creating the folds for me. I could then take the opposite points here, and we could adjust those a little bit more. Move, and maybe we go back a little bit more like that. So if I was looking at this in the top, right, I'm essentially creating the folds of the curtain. That's, that's the point. So And this whole line is, is four feet long for right now. So let me take this line, and I'll copy it, V for vertical, and we'll go up above a window. I think curtains are normally 84 inches if I'm seven feet. There it is. So that's fine, and I could very easily just take these two surfaces and I could loft them together. Oops. All right. And that creates a curtain. It's awfully straight, though. Right? Not quite what I wanted. So let's make some edits to this a little bit more. So number one, maybe I want the, the curtain to be pulled out here, but I want it to be held back by a tie or something in the middle. So let me take this line, let me copy it vertically, and we'll go up to wherever the tie would be. We'll say maybe right there. Then let me go ahead and do some scales. I'll scale 1D. this line, and I'm going to go from this point to that point, and I'm going to shrink it down to be where it's tied. Then maybe I'll do scale 1D there to there, and we'll let that one fall out just a little bit longer than this one. I also need some curves that go from this point to this point to this point, and another set of curves that go down the back side. So I'll go back to my interpolate points, the second one over here, and I'll connect this, that, and that. And I'll hit Enter to finish. And it should give me a bit of a natural curve through those objects. And this may, this may be a bit extreme in this example, you know, because the curtain's all the way out being held back. But you guys, you get the point. And let me go from here down to there and down to there, which is already relatively straight. Now if I took this and I selected these and I went to surface net curve network and I said okay, I'd be getting that swipe. So it's already looking better, but it probably needs a little bit more because these curves are always twisted a little bit. So let me delete that. We're right here with this curve and I might need to go back in and make some manipulations. So let me turn on those points again. 
and we'll pull these center ones out just a little bit. A bit like that. And maybe these needs to turn on a little bit. And let's squish these up a little bit more. And maybe these get pulled out just a little bit. I'm just making a few tweaks so that they're not quite so perfect. And then I can go ahead and I can take these and once again go up to Surface Curve Network. And I can start to make that. And just by doing those little bits of adjustments, it wasn't much, it helps. Now, in reality, there'd be another piece that was holding it back. And it probably would have you know, some grommets or something that were holding the, the curtain in place. So let's throw that in really fit, fast just for the fun of it. Let me come into my uh, side view. It's hard to see, but that's what I'm, I'm essentially looking at. I'm going to go create a circle. Uh, we'll say that that's an uh, inch and a half. I'll move that circle over my curtains, more like that. Remember, it doesn't have to be directly on it. And then I will use, in the right view, I'll use project to project that curve onto these surfaces, which will then create all the little holes that the curtain rod would go through. I can then use trim there's lots of these so it takes a little while to get through them all If I'm looking at it, there I've cut the holes through. And so now I just need a curtain rod, and you guys get how that works. Does that make sense? So there are sometimes other moments where you need to make manipulations that are a little bit more advanced than, than even this. And I can't help myself but show you, but I'm starting to get off on the deep end of these are getting you know a little bit too far. So let me go ahead and copy this over to here. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to copy it vertically and we'll go down the negative 84 inches, or 7 feet. So I have those two ends. I'll then create a line that goes there and a line that goes right there. So I have, basically, I could make the curved network of these. It would be the same as the loft right now, because I haven't adjusted them. And now I need to make some adjustments to this particular curve, but I didn't, don't want to do it manually. And I can do that using something called a cage edit uh, of my object. So again, this is a more advanced topic, but I can go into transform, cage editing, and then I can cage edit. We'll do a bounding box, world. And this x, y, and z, we're going to go over this more later on in the semester, but I, I have to throw this out there. Uh, the x point count is the number of reference points that you have in these various things. So we're going to do, uh, to keep this clean, 4, 4, and just 1 in the Z, because I don't want more than 1. Oh, 2, sorry, 2. Uh, and our degrees are fine. I'll go ahead and hit Enter. It gives me this little box that I can then start to manipulate what's happening to my curve. So let me take these middle points out. Basically, it's a control object for my curve. So I can pull that out like this and have a uniform billow in that lower section of curves, something like that. Which then, once I have that uniform billow, and actually, you know what, let me go back to this. Let's move these out there. Let me take this, and I'm going to move it back just a little bit. Now I also need, these wouldn't be straight if it was billowing, so I need to make some manipulations there. So let me turn the edit points on. Oh, I have to rebuild first. We'll do maybe three. 
I'll turn my edit points on so I have control. I want this. not letting me select it. I want that point, I want that point, and I want this curve. And we're going to move these out like this. So I'm moving that piece out just a little bit. Let's take these and let's move them. Oops. Add a little bit more like that. So now that I have these, I can take this, 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 and this, and I can go up curve network and say OK. And now I'm getting the billowing curtain rather than the straight curtain. So it's through a combination of these things that you can ultimately create any, any sort of shape that you're envisioning. Not that you would have a leather curtain, but you, you get the idea, right? Uh, of what you're doing. Same strategy if you wanted to do a tablecloth that was draping on an object. I mean, it's, it's the same basic principles in terms of how you create this stuff. OK, so what I want you to do today is I want you to work to create at least one of these cushions. It would be nice if you created more. You may want something like this as part of your uh, chairs in your, in your assignment. There's nothing wrong with doubling up if you really want to create a cushion for your chair. Figure out how to make the cushion today and use that. You will po uh, post it the same way that you did last class, where you bundle the materials. Go ahead and download the, the preview render file from last class. Same thing, or if you already have it, load whatever your cushion is into that file so you can get a nice rendering out of it. Make sure the materials are packed. You'll upload the 3DM file. You'll upload the final rendering of your uh, object or your cushion or whatever. And you'll upload those materials as part of it. Okay? Are there any questions? Right? I know it's a lot for you to take in all at once, but a large part of this is just trying and practicing. I know also that me sitting up here, I can make it look easy because I've done it so many times. And that's to be expected. You will make it look easy by the end of the semester. Just right now, you have to learn the, the basic techniques first. All right?